Given how vast and old the universe is, why have we seen no sign of alien civilizations? This question is called the Fermi Paradox, and has occupied the minds of science fiction authors, futurists, and scientists for over 70 years. If you're like most people, you immediately started thinking of possible answers, and you might be wondering why this is called a paradox. And yeah, a lot of people have thought of answers. But just because we can think of possible answers doesn't mean the problem has been solved. Today, we're going to begin by laying the groundwork for how to think about the Fermi Paradox in the context of a scientific jigsaw puzzle, and then we're going to look at some of its major possible solutions. Modern humans have been around for about 300,000 years. 10,000 years ago, we began to transition from a nomadic lifestyle to one of farming, setting the stage for technological innovation. And today, we have people in space. If we continue on this trajectory, it is likely we will have cities in space within a few thousand years. Over the course of a million years, we will continue to build space cities and space continents until the sun is surrounded in a Dyson sphere. In another million years, the nearest stars will also become encased in Dyson spheres, and our presence will be noticeable from anywhere in the galaxy. The universe is old, almost 14 billion years. That is 14,000 times the amount of time it takes to go from zero technology to Dyson sphere. Furthermore, there are 100 billion stars in the Milky Way, and 100 billion galaxies in the universe, each with its own billions or trillions of stars. That means, in total, the observable universe has about this many stars. Given the number of chances so vastly beyond comprehension and the mind-bending vastness of time, why have we not seen a single shred nor shadow of any Dyson Sphere civilization? This is the Fermi Paradox or as one of my favorite YouTube creators, Isaac Arthur, calls it, the Dyson Dilemma. Now you may have noticed that this argument relies on intuition and extrapolation. And the Fermi Paradox, like all paradoxes, is solved by figuring out which of these assumptions is incorrect. So let's get to the possible solutions. 1. Life is astronomically beyond rare. We don't know the chemistry of how the first self-replicating molecules came to be on Earth, and we can't rule out the possibility that it's so improbable that it only happens once every few galaxies. 2. Complex life is incredibly rare. Somewhere along the process between self-replicating molecules and multicellular life, there is some obstacle that is almost impossible for evolution to get past. 3. Intelligence and technology are rare. We don't know exactly what separates us from the rest of the animals and allows us to innovate. Logic, language, imagination, or something else. Maybe all of these are necessary. Whatever it is, the perfect combination only evolved once in the entire 4 billion year history of the Earth. 4. Planets that remain habitable for long enough and have the right conditions for spacefaring civilization to arise are rare. Climate models suggest both Venus and Mars have been habitable in the past, including liquid oceans, but geological forces took away their habitability over billions of years. Maybe that's par for the course in the universe. And it could be that all of these are somewhat rare, and they add together to make something astronomically beyond rare. 6. Every technological civilization inevitably destroys itself before it can expand into space. There are many ways a world could be destroyed, but most of them are uncommon enough that a good fraction of civilizations would survive. In order for this to count as a great filter, there would have to be some kind of hard cap, like a black ball technology. A device in the space of possible inventions that can destroy a planet is easy to use, easy to make, and every civilization eventually invents. We don't know of any black ball technologies, obviously, because we're still here. And for all we know, there aren't any. It could be that the great filter is behind us, and it's smooth sailing from here to the stars. 7. 
Maybe extremely advanced civilizations have no need to surround stars. Hey, who knows what a million years of scientific innovation will bring. And there are crazy sci-fi explanations, like the ones in Existence by David Brin and The Dark Forest by Qixin Liu, which I won't spoil because those books are really good. Some people suggest that maybe aliens have a non-interference policy, or they hide, or they stop growing. And while it's perfectly reasonable to suppose that some civilizations will do these things, they're only valid solutions to the Fermi Paradox if it's inevitable that all civilizations eventually do them. It only takes one to Dyson Sphere up the galaxy. These are all legitimate possibilities, but we have no evidence to choose between them. Until we fill in the relevant parts of the scientific jigsaw puzzle, the Fermi Paradox will remain a paradox. One last thing comes to mind. Given the silence of the sky and the Dyson Dilemma, we may be the first civilization on the galactic scene. The universe is very old, but even its 14 billion year past is just the blink of an eye compared to the future. A trillion years from now, many more stars will have exploded, increasing the concentration of the heavy elements needed for life as we know it to exist. This means we could be the precursors, the ancients, the ones who set up the galaxy and build the great technology. Perhaps a billion years from now, a fledgling civilization far, far away will start up their new telescope and notice a galaxy-sized patch of infrared on the sky. And they will know they are not alone. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.